guys in this video we're going to make a baby shark or daddy shark 3d cake and i'm going to make this one standing up so i've printed out a template to the size that i want it to be so mine's over two a4 sheets that i've printed it and i've got a big wooden baseboard that we're going to use that we've got some wooden feet attached to and i need to drill a hole in that the same size as my metal rod so my metal rod just fits can you see within my template there and then i've got two boards that are also going to go within the body to help support the cake and i think i'll probably put some rice krispie treats in there too so we're going to need some washers and nuts as well these all need to fit over the rod that you're going to use and they're going to screw onto here like so now later on we are going to be adding a board between the wooden board and this we're going to thread the rod through the board put a washer on the bottom and then a nut and we're going to tighten that up really nice and tight and on the other side there's also going to be another washer and another nut and we're going to screw that all the way down to the bottom my board isn't going to come into contact with the cake directly we're going to put another cake board over the top so don't worry too much about that at the moment i want to tighten it up quite a bit you see i've got a helping hand there richard's holding the frame for me while i try and hold the nut at the top and the bottom and tighten that up as much as possible this is to prevent my cake spinning around on it now I'm going to put on a cake drum. So this is just a normal round cake drum, a bit bigger than my wooden base, and I've iced it in fondant with a hole over the top that's big enough to slot over that nut. Now to make sure it doesn't slip around, I've put a bit of hot glue gun between this board and the wooden base as well. You can see if I hold my template behind the rod how it's going to stand, and I've marked where the boards are going to go. So one here and one a bit higher up. So I'm going to thread another nut on to the point of my first board, and we're going to just put a small washer over the top of that once it's in place. Again, just using my template as a guide. So the small washer on. Then I'm going to put my cake board on until it meets that washer. So the first one's not going to take much weight. So I'm just going to leave it with that small washer underneath and I'm not putting anything on top. I'm going to add my next nut. I'm going to just make sure it's level with the line I've drawn on my template, which is going to be my second board. I'm going to put a larger washer on this time because it's a much bigger piece that's going to be holding. It's going to be holding quite a bit of weight with the cake, this next one. It's also a thicker cake drum that I've added. So I think it's a five inch cake drum I've used here. But always hold them against your template, just checking they fit in there. Another washer on the top and then another bolt on there. So that's our frame made. So make sure it's all nice and tight. And I think for underneath... We're going to use Rice Krispies and on the top, we're going to divide it into layers of cake. So I tried to draw roughly on my template where my layers of cake fit. My layers of cake ended up slightly thicker than that, so it didn't quite work out exactly as planned. So next, I want to make sure the cake frame is food safe. I've covered my frame in the tin foil to try and make it food safe. So underneath the biggest board, so underneath the biggest one and between the smaller one, I'm packing it in with Rice Krispie treats. So this is just marshmallows and Rice Krispies mixed together. I've softened them in the microwave and we've just pushed them on there. Now I need a little bit lower than my board as well. Hopefully because it's not too much going below that, it will stick. Give it a good press on. And then what I'm going to do is put my actual cake now on that top board. So I'm just going to cover it in a buttercream. Or you can use chocolate ganache, whichever you prefer. And I'm going to start putting on discs of cake. So each disc of my cake is about the width of the head on my template. So this first one's actually a seven inch cake. I'm going to put a little bit more buttercream on top of that and we're going to add our next layer. And we're going to continue doing this with layers of cake until it reaches the top of my template. So I'm going to keep holding that template there just to check. So my top layer of cake could be a little bit smaller. Then what I'm going to do is cut it to the shape. It kind of looks like the shape of an ice cream at the moment. So we're rounding off the top and a little bit at the bottom. And I'm gonna cover it in ganache. So I'm gonna use ganache rather than buttercream because it's gonna set a little bit firmer for me. It's just gonna make it a bit sturdier for transporting it anywhere. So I'm gonna go over giving it a layer. I'll let it firm up. While I'm letting that firm up, I'm just gonna trim a little bit of those Rice Krispie treats off the bottom because I think I've put them a little bit lower than I needed to. And I'm gonna go over with a second layer. So hopefully the second layer is just gonna neaten everything off. I really want the surface to be as smooth as possible on this one so that when I put the fondant over the top, it still looks fairly smooth. So I'm using like an acetate smoother or a flexible smoother to kind of run over the ganache wherever I've got a curve to give me a nice smooth line. And I've just got a little bit of modeling chocolate that I'm just gonna use for the bottom of its tail, just there. Now I've just added a little bit of a wooden skewer in the end just to hold it in place. I must remove this though before actually serving it. 
and I'm going to cover it in piping gel. So the whole bottom section is in piping gel. And I'm just going to use some pre-coloured fondant. I'll put links in the description box below to everything that I've used. So I've covered the back and we've got the join at the front because it's going to have a white panel at the front so we know we can cover that. So I'm smoothing it down the best I can with my hands and also you can use like flexible smoothers as well. Again, I'll put links in the description box below to where you can get these. And then we're doing the same on the head. Now, it didn't quite roll my fondant big enough, so it's going to have to be stretched. And it's got a couple of crease lines in, but it's not too much of a problem. I'm going to trim those down with the scissors, and we're just going to rub over those seams the best we can. You'll see at the front of the head, there's a little bit of the chocolate ganache that's still on show where I haven't covered. I'm not going to worry about that too much because, again, the white area for the mouth is going to go on this bit. I'm just kind of rubbing the edge of the fondant down a bit so that it's thinner. And this is just the back of the head now that I'm just sort of neatening up the bottom of and rubbing it down so it blends in slightly into the body. Now I've actually just cut up my template now so that I can see the size for the tummy. So this is the white panel off the shark's tummy and we're just using some white fondant. Or you can use modeling paste here if you prefer, if it's a bit thicker, and we're going to cut it out to shape. So I'm going to cut out all my other white pieces as well that are going to go on there. So again, using the template, I've cut out the white area of the mouth and I'm putting it on top of some white fondant. And we're going to cut around that shape for the teeth. So I'm doing those sort of bottom jaw and the top set of teeth separate. You can do them as one piece, but I think they were going to come apart anyway. So I've cut them out separately. And then two ovals in white for the eyes. Just neaten off the edge by rubbing your fingers on any jaggedy edges. We're going to cut out two smaller ovals in black. I've rolled the black really nice and thin. And then I'm just cutting out a small circle out of each of those black ovals. Again, I'm keeping my eye on the template so I can see where this should go. And you can also see I've cut out some dark blue ovals, some small ovals that are gonna become the nostrils. So I've stuck the black into the white on each eye, and then we're gonna cut out its fin. So I did cut the fin off the template, but obviously it's from the front view, so it's very thin. So when I've cut mine out, I'm gonna cut it much chunkier, so a big chunky triangle. We'll put it to one side to firm up. Now you might have to use quite a bit of Tylos in this fondant when we're cutting out the fins, just so it firms up and holds in place. So again, I've cut off the end of the tail off the template and both the fins off either side. And we're just cutting around that template for the shape. You can go slightly bigger than the template if you want. My cakes turned out slightly bigger than the template. And I'm gonna stick these down now. For the tummy section, I can just use water. And I've just rolled out a deep red really thin that's going to go under the mouth area that we're pressing on first. Once that's on, I'm going to go over the top with the white. Just make sure the red is positioned in the right place. If you go too high, it's going to show above the teeth. You can see just on the right-hand side that mine comes a little bit further out than the white of my mouth, so I'll have to cut that off later. And then let's stick our top row on. So these should stick with just a little bit of water. Just give it a good press in place. And you can just see we've put a tiny bit of water where I'm going to press each of those ovals for the nostrils. So they're going just above the teeth. And then let's put a bit of water on for positioning the eyes. Stick those just on there like so. Now I want to cover the rod that we've got on show here. So I'm going to take a bit of leftover paste that I've got from when I actually iced the cake drum. Now I didn't show you guys icing the cake drum because I did do that in advance of making the cake. But what I'm going to do is using that extra fondant, we're going to make some little teardrop shapes so it looks like a water splash. And also just some little thin bits, kind of in a circular shape around the base so it looks like it's splashing out of the water. And you could put as many or as few as you like on. So after just being sat at the side for half an hour or so, the fins and tail feel like they've firmed up a bit. If they haven't, don't add them just yet or you might have to remake them with a bit more Tylos. But I'm gonna push these in place. Now, the ones on the side, I'm gonna to have to push on a wooden skewer to help support them, because they're fairly heavy. Also, you can stick them down with a bit of water as well. Give them a good press on in place. The one on the top should stay on its own, on the top of the head. The one on the tail is gonna go on that wooden stick that I inserted in there earlier. And I'm just gonna finish it off with a little bit of ribbon just around the bottom edge of my board. So I'm sticking this on with some double-sided sticky tape and it just finishes it off nicely. So it's a fairly plain cake, but I wanted to try and do it upright just to challenge myself just a little bit. So I hope you've all enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below.
You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.